So I'll just conclude by saying that Representative Claritas is absolutely correct. If the governor vetoes the budget, let's look where we are. If he vetoes it, there is no plan in place. The only budget that has passed both chambers is the budget that bipartisanly the House Republicans and Senate Republicans put out there that received the required votes to get passed through both chambers. That's the only viable budget. If he vetoes it, chaos hits Connecticut. That's the end of that game. Municipalities get hurt. The first selectman from Scotland is here. He's going to get horribly hurt in his town. Education's going to get hurt. Disabled's going to get hurt. So here's the question. The question to the Democrats who did not vote in favor of this budget is very, very simple. Are you going to play party politics and not override this veto and accept cuts to education? Are you going to play party politics and accept cuts to the disabled? Are you going to play party politics and accept cuts to municipalities? Are you going to play party politics and allow mental health services, drug addiction services, all get cuts? Is that what you're going to do just so you can play party politics? If you don't have the answer and you don't have a budget ready to go with the majority support of the House and the Senate, you have an ethical and moral obligation to override this veto and get our budget on. And once you do, if you want to change parts of it, bring the amendments and we could talk about the amendments. But you need to override the governor's veto and pass this budget.